Floyd Mayweather's much-awaited rematch with John Gotti III on Saturday might have promised excitement, but for many, it fell short. As fans filled the arena CDMX in Mexico City, they expected to see the legendary Mayweather deliver a masterclass. However, what they witnessed was a much slower paced match where Mayweather, while in control, looked far from his prime and Gotti threw barely any punches. Yet, the biggest surprise of the night came backstage when none other than Canelo Alvarez stepped forward to congratulate his former rival. Floyd Mayweather, now in his late 40s, entered the ring looking noticeably out of shape. Over the years, his physique had softened, and despite maintaining an undefeated record, it was clear to many that Father Time had started catching up with him. His once impeccable conditioning had given way to a slower, heavier version of himself. However, despite the changes in his physical form, Mayweather's boxing IQ and sharp instincts remained as effective as ever. From the opening bell, it became evident that this was not going to be a competitive bout. Gotti, who had transitioned from MMA to boxing, seemed to be no match for Mayweather's superior technical skills. Mayweather, with his trademark shoulder roll defense and slick counterpunching, controlled the entire pace of the fight, leaving Gotti struggling to find openings. And it wasn't long before fans began to notice that Gotti wasn't throwing punches at all. As the rounds went on, the fight became less of a contest and more of a showcase of Mayweather's ability to toy with his opponent. Gotti, who had talked a big game before the fight, seemed hesitant to engage. While he kept moving around the ring, his output was close to non-existent. Many fans watching the pay-per-view complained that Gotti's refusal to throw punches made the fight incredibly one-sided and ultimately boring. This isn't what we paid for one fan said on Twitter, further extending the words of many others who felt the fight lacked any real action. Gotti didn't even try to fight. The best he did was have discussions with Floyd mid-fight. Mayweather was just going through the motions. Despite Gotti's lack of offense, Mayweather continued to land punches at will. His footwork, though slower than in his prime, was still a class above Gotti's. He evaded whatever limited offense Gotti attempted with ease and peppered him with jabs and hooks. It was clear that Mayweather could have ended the fight at any point, but perhaps for the sake of entertainment, he allowed the bout to go the full eight rounds. By the time the final bell rang, the crowd's frustration had reached its peak. If you watched the fight, you could already start hearing some booing. The event, which had promised fireworks, ended without much fanfare. Many fans, particularly those who had paid for the pay-per-view, voiced their dissatisfaction. Social media was flooded with complaints, with some calling it one of Mayweather's most underwhelming performances. Another one of Floyd's scam fights. What's the point of having a rematch to an exhibition fight? He should have gotten back in the ring with Canelo again. One disgruntled viewer posted, and let's be honest, this was something we can all agree with. Instead of Floyd going after the son of a crime lord, he should have gone against Canelo for the second time. And not just us, even those experts in the game have often said that this has always been Floyd's strategy. His 50-0 record, as much as he brags about it, has always been challenged that he chose the easier fights. While Mayweather was declared the unofficial winner against Gotti, having clearly dominated the fight, the result did little to quell the disappointment. Some speculated that Mayweather, who had built a reputation on being a defensive genius, might have gone too far in coasting through this bout, focusing more on not getting hit than putting on an exciting performance which again, was not exciting at all. As fans voiced their frustrations, the real surprise of the night occurred backstage. In the middle of post-fight talks, Mayweather received an unexpected visitor. Canelo Alvarez, the Mexican superstar, now one of boxing's biggest draws, had been Mayweather's opponent over a decade ago, in 2013. That fight had been a one-sided affair, 
with Mayweather delivering a masterclass to hand Canelo his first professional loss. Yet, despite their history, there seemed to be no animosity between the two champions. And one thing that makes Mayweather frustrating to fight, he'll land these right hands, but he will not engage in the slugfest. Canelo, dressed sharply in a suit, approached Mayweather backstage with a respectful nod. Apparently, even though many though Floyd did not perform at his best, Canelo thought otherwise and even congratulated him. You did what you always do, Canelo said, keeping his words short but genuine. You controlled the fight just like back then. Congrats. It was a brief but powerful moment. Two of boxing's greatest fighters, once adversaries, now standing together in mutual respect. Canelo's appearance, though unexpected, added a layer of intrigue to an otherwise lackluster event. Despite the disappointment felt by fans, Canelo's gesture was a proof of Mayweather's enduring legacy and the respect he commands, even from those he has defeated in the past. Um, some people say that he's comparable to Floyd Mayweather. What do you think? Before Mayweather faced off Gotti in the ring, he was in Mexico preparing for his next big challenge against John Gotti III. The streets were filled with excitement. You could feel the energy in the air. Mayweather, the undefeated champ at 50, 0, was ready to prove his skills once again. This time, his preparation took him south of the border into the heart of Mexico City. It seemed like a good idea at first, training in a country with such a rich boxing history. However, Mexico also happens to be the homeland of one of his biggest rivals, Canelo Alvarez. Floyd had planned an open workout session. Crowds gathered to watch, curious to see how the aging legend would look ahead of his fight with Gotti. But things didn't go as smoothly as Mayweather might have hoped. As he began working on the pads with his trainer Crystal Thomas, the crowd didn't seem all that impressed. Instead of cheering, they began shouting Canelo Alvarez's name. It was a clear show of support for their homegrown hero and a subtle jab at Mayweather. For those who have followed Mayweather's career, it wasn't much of a surprise. He was used to this kind of thing. But in Mexico City, the chants of Canelo, Canelo were louder, more passionate. It wasn't just a reminder of his rivalry with Alvarez. It felt like the entire country was letting him know where their loyalty lay. As the chants filled the gym, Mayweather didn't let it throw him off. He stayed focused, landing crisp punches on the pads, his timing sharp despite being 47 years old. He knew the crowd was behind Canelo, but that wasn't going to stop him from training hard and preparing for his next fight. Back when Canelo fought Floyd, he was a young, hungry, 23-year-old rising star, while Mayweather was a 36-year-old veteran already cemented as one of the best. Despite the age difference, Mayweather gave Canelo a boxing lesson, dominating him in a fight that many believed would be much closer. Mayweather's defensive mastery was too much for Canelo, who struggled to land anything meaningful. The fight ended with Mayweather winning by majority decision, a result some even thought should have been unanimous. In the years since that fight, Folks, you are watching absolutely one of the greatest fighters in the history of boxing. Be pleased you spent the money to see this. Be pleased. This is Canelo has grown into a megastar. With a record of February 2nd, 61, he's established himself as the face of modern boxing, a pound-for-pound -pound king who's conquered multiple weight divisions. But that loss to Mayweather still lingers in the minds of many fans, especially those who support Canelo. And when Mayweather showed up in Mexico to train, they weren't going to let him forget about it. As Mayweather continued his pad work, the comments section of Fight Hype TV, which was streaming the session, started to light up. Mayweather still had his loyal followers, and they were quick to defend him. One fan commented, they yelling Canelo like he didn't beat the sh asterisk it out of him? It was a simple but strong reminder that Mayweather had already defeated Canelo, no matter how much the crowd wanted to support their guy. Another fan chimed in, pointing out Mayweather's age when he fought Canelo. They are screaming Canelo and May owned him at the tender age of 36, the comment read. It's true, Mayweather wasn't exactly in his prime when he faced the young Mexican star, but he still outclassed him.
The comments kept rolling in, with one fan recalling just how dominant Mayweather was in their fight. Lowell the shouting Canelo, but he had nothing on Floyd WTF? It was a fair point. While Canelo has become a much better fighter since then, at the time he couldn't touch Mayweather. And then, of course, there were the hypothetical matchups. Mayweather fans love to imagine what it would be like if their guy could fight some of today's top fighters. One fan suggested Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Bud would be awesome, but Floyd Mayweather Jr. would want it as an exhibition fight, though. It's an interesting idea. Terence Crawford, known as Bud, is one of the best welterweights in the world today. A fight between him and Mayweather would have been something special, but at this stage in his career, Mayweather is more focused on exhibition bouts, fights that aren't as serious but still draw big crowds and lots of attention. Another comment shifted the focus to Mayweather's late uncle Roger Mayweather, who had been a huge influence on his career. R.I.P. Roger Mayweather, Floyd is training a new generation of pad workers, it read. Floyd's bond with his uncle Roger was well known, and his passing in 2020 was a big loss. Now Mayweather was working with Crystal Thomas, passing on the knowledge and skills he had learned over the years. Mexican people, you know, like for the first time ever. It's not my first time ever now. I'm in front of the world. We just built on the next level. Display my skills for that. Put on a great show. Even with the crowd chanting for Canelo, Mayweather remained in control. He kept landing his punches, each one as sharp as the last. This was what made him a legend. His ability to stay calm under pressure, to block out the noise and focus on the task at hand. But the animosity in the gym was clear. Mexico wasn't Mayweather's turf. This was Canelo's territory. And no matter how many years had passed since their fight, the Mexican fans weren't going to forget. They still held Canelo in the highest regard, and seeing Mayweather in their country felt like a slight to their champion. Despite the tension, Mayweather kept his cool. He wasn't the kind of fighter to let the crowd get to him. In fact, he seemed to thrive in these kinds of situations. The louder the crowd chanted, the more focused he became. It was almost like he fed off the energy, using it to push himself harder. The session eventually wrapped up, and Mayweather, sweat dripping from his brow, gave a slight smirk. He had done what he came to do. He didn't need the approval of the Mexican crowd. He had already proven himself against Canelo, and no amount of chanting was going to change that. Mayweather's training in Mexico might not have gone as planned, but it showed us that the rivalry still burns between him and Canelo. Even though their fight was over a decade ago, the Mexican fans still hadn't forgiven Mayweather for that night in 2013. And while Canelo has gone on to achieve greatness, there will always be that one loss on his record, a loss that Mayweather will never let him forget. Mayweather now preparing for another fight in his long and storied career, was ready for whatever came next. Whether it was John Gotti III or another exhibition bout, he would step into the ring with the same confidence and skill that had made him one of the greatest of all time. The chants of Canelo were just noise. Mayweather was focused on the future, not the past. However, the animosity between these two has actually grown recently. Floyd Mayweather's opinions often carry weight in the boxing world, especially when discussing fighters he has shared the ring with. One of the most debated topics in recent times is Saul Canelo Alvarez's apparent reluctance to fight David Benavidez. A fight between these two at super middleweight is one that fans are eager for, but Canelo has consistently dismissed the idea. Who's away? I mean, we got, that's good. We got a lot. Benavidez can go and beat that same guy. He, he can beat that same guy at, at 168. So he's not doing nothing, you know, like I said before. But when you, when, when you, are put in a, a certain position. Mayweather is clear in his stance. He believes Canelo is ducking Benavidez. This opinion is rooted not only in Canelo's actions, but also in the way the situation has been unfolding over the years. Benavidez has been vocal about his desire to face Canelo. And as the WBC mandatory challenger, he expected the fight to be inevitable. Yet, despite this status, the fight has not materialized. He should be go. I mean, he's able to, like, like me. You know, when I was in the position, I can pick and choose who I want to. Canelo's primary justification for not taking the fight has been the weight advantage Benavidez supposedly carries on fight night. According to Canelo, 
Benavidez enters the ring on fight night with an extra 25 pounds, making the contest a more significant physical challenge than a typical super middleweight clash. Although Canelo maintains confidence in his ability to beat Benavidez, his emphasis on the weight disparity hints at a more complicated dynamic. His statement that, I can beat that guy tomorrow, while simultaneously acknowledging the risk Benavidez poses, suggests that while Canelo sees a potential victory, he also recognizes the danger. That he possibly could, and David Benavidez is just another challenge out there, potentially. For Mayweather's criticism cuts through this narrative, aligning with what many in the boxing community have felt for years, that Canelo is avoiding the fight because of the threat Benavidez represents. Mayweather is quick to acknowledge Canelo's skill, calling him a hell of a fighter, but he does not shy away from expressing his belief that Canelo is deliberately sidestepping the Mexican monster. Mayweather's thoughts on this are blunt and straightforward. In my personal opinion, he's ducking Benavidez. The idea that Canelo is avoiding Benavidez isn't new, but it gains traction because of Mayweather's own history with Canelo. Mayweather was the first man to hand Canelo a professional loss in their 2013 bout, Canelo has come a long way since that defeat, becoming a multi-division world champion and one of the sport's most recognizable figures. However, for Mayweather to call out his former rival for avoiding Benavidez speaks to the seriousness of the claim and the perceived legitimacy behind it. A fighter. Mm -hmm. He's out of a fighter. And everyone is now saying that he's not the same fighter. Benavidez has done his part to push for the fight. As the WBC mandatory challenger, he should have been next in line for a shot at Canelo's titles, but instead, Canelo has chosen other paths. The decision to dismiss the fight and even suggest that a potential purse for it would need to reach $200 million has raised eyebrows. For many, this is seen as pricing himself out of the fight, a tactic used to make the match financially untenable and thus avoid the challenge without explicitly declining it. Because I, I, I earned that right. Um, but do... Do I like this fight? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. We want to see Benavidez. Mayweather's statement that, we want to see Benavidez, let's make it happen, captures the sentiment of much of the boxing community. Fans want to see the best fight the best, and in the super middleweight division, there is no greater challenge for Canelo than Benavidez. Mayweather, having been through many high-stakes bouts himself, recognizes the importance of taking on these types of fights. From his perspective, Canelo owes it to the sport and to himself to face Benavidez and settle the debate about who is the best at 168 pounds. What I have to say to Canelo is this. You proved yourself already. You proved yourself. You fought a lot of... Canelo's reluctance to face Benavidez has not only been scrutinized by Mayweather, but by others in the sport as well. While Canelo has fought and defeated top-level opponents across multiple divisions, the omission of Benavidez from his resume raises questions about whether he is avoiding the most dangerous contenders in his current weight class. Mayweather's words carry weight because of his experience and his own history of facing top competition, regardless of the risks involved. You went up in weight on to numerous weight classes, like myself and like other fighters throughout the years. Same thing with Pacquiao. You know, Canelo is a great fighter. Adding to the complexity of the situation is Benavidez's decision to stay active at light heavyweight, where he is eyeing about with the winner of the undisputed clash between Artur Beterbiev and Dmitry Bivol in October. This move signals Benavidez's impatience and determination to keep his career moving forward, even if the Canelo fight continues to elude him. Benavidez has grown tired of waiting for his shot at the 168-pound titles, and his decision to pursue opportunities at 175 pounds highlights his frustration with the current state of affairs. Canelo is a hell of a fighter. Mm -hmm. He's a hell of a fighter. And everyone is now saying that he's not the same fighter. However, despite his shift in focus, the demand for a Canelo Benavidez fight persists. Benavidez remains one of the most formidable challengers at super middleweight, and many believe that the fight is inevitable even if it doesn't happen immediately. Mayweather's insistence that Canelo is ducking Benavidez adds pressure to Canelo to eventually take the fight. Well, I don't really like to bash somebody because at the end of the day, I give respect to Canelo. He's a great fighter. Yeah. He's one of the best Mexican but fighters not, of all time. But wanting to fight him, David, is not bashing yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not bashing him. But that's what I'm saying. They spin the narrative on Instagram. Right. If I say something, they say this or that. But... 
I, I I only want what I earned. Whether Canelo will eventually step up to the challenge remains to be seen, but for now, the speculation continues, fueled by Mayweather's stance on the matter. Well, what do you think of the dynamics between Canelo and Floyd? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more.